Right, I've got one last thing to try before I give up for the day. So I'm going to remove the circuit board and take it in the workshop and see if we can find anything interesting out. Right, let's have a look. I don't know if you can actually see, but there's tons of corrosion. One burns out and looks like a resistor. Um, and then on this side, corrosion, more corrosion on the jumpers, don't know what they're for, really is. So what's happening is it's failing to sense the current of the um, the gate motor when it comes to a stop and because of that it can't tell you it's stopped or started so we've got a couple of choices I can try and get the components to fix this but I don't know which ones are dead and which ones aren't or I buy a new circuit board or we buy a new gate system so I think or oh, we get the circuit board repaired so if I'm going to look at prices for circuit boards, look at prices for systems and repairing circuit boards. Yeah, well, I've had loads of ants living in it as well. And there's something here. Look. I don't know what that is. Some little creature living in there. That's it. This one here. Spider. Good afternoon. Lovely day outside. So I thought uh, I'll have a look at this. So if you remember this uh, old circuit board with the ants in it. Nice. And this is the new one. So it looks super similar. Uh, I guess there's a couple couple of differences um, mainly here I think um, but everything else looks the same really I don't really want one well, let's open it and have a look different inside interesting right so the first thing we're going to do <coughs> is open up those two boxes before we change the circuit board and see if we can identify I think we said it was the neutral wire between the two boxes um, find out where that bad connection is replace that and uh, then we can insert the circuit board and give it a test so let's uh, isolate the power to those boxes and have a look, see what we can find. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace out all these block connectors with new and, and then we're going to put a hole in the bottom of the box so that if any water does come in, it drains out the bottom. A lot of people forget to do that, but yeah, that should be good. So I'll uh, get on with that. But we're going to replace the box ultimately anyway. I think these have just perished here. Yeah. Right. So while I was doing that, look, that's where it was. That one was broken, letting the water in. But they're all pretty knackered. So we're going to take them out. 
Yikes. Just take these out. And come up with some way of waterproofing this top. Absolute joys of doing things in January. Gosh. Could be worse, could be snowing. Let's go and see Rosie. Hey, this is nice. Where's that little face? Oh, yeah. Come on, here we go. Oh, yeah, look at this. Always rains when you've got electrics. Open air. Oh. Hmm. Twenty minutes later. Sunshine. Right, let's get on it. Okay, to cover this, <clears throat> I've got an old piece of flashing from uh, uh, a Velux roof light, which is aluminium, so that won't rust. I'm just going to cut that to go on there. So I thought we could have a look at this side as well. That's my dad's thing. Still got some silver on the screws. So, so here we are. Um, that's the cable that goes to the other side. So we've got um, brown and yellow connected in a loop. So we'll measure the resistance of that and we can compare it to the previous measurement. So yellow and brown. Zero point four ohms. Zero point two ohms. It's pretty good. I'm going zero point two. So that's pretty low a piece of cable. So now let's try between yellow and blue. We want the similar same 0 0.4. 0 0.2. So that tells me that what we've done with the connections in that box it was in this box because the other box looks reasonable although we're gonna have to change it anyway. So that's it really. Um, let's put the new circuit board back in, fire it up and um, test it. New board to go in. Right. This is tricky because I've got four connections and only three pins. Yeah, let me check the other one. Okay, yeah, we got a problem. It's got three pins. You can just see there, three. And this one on the board had four. Question is, what was the extra pin for? Right, well. I'm going to have to have a look at this because you're not going to hang around while I look at this and then I'll get back to you. So looking at the circuit board underneath, the one with four pins, this fourth one here appears to be connected to the third one on this side of the board because it's a double sided board. So I'm pretty sure we can ignore that one. Well, what's the worst that could happen? Right, I've got to turn the power on. Right, let's see what happens when I put the fuse in. Got some lights. Right, let me set the um, gates up. 
so the gates are halfway locked in so we need to recognize the opening and shutting angles of the gates we do that by pressing one of the buttons holding it down and if the gate the gate on the left should shut first if it opens then it's the wrong way around and we'll reverse the wires Well, I hope you saw that. Two things about that. The motor works, so our cable fixes worked, because that never used to work, but it was opening, so we got to reverse the cables round. I'll do that, and I'll try it again. Okay, so I've reversed the motor, let's try it again. This gate closes to find its um, end place and if you remember before with this old circuit board it wouldn't stop pushing so I'm hoping it stops very soon perfect now this one That's it, it all works. Now, there is a slight problem. There's a gap in the gate, uh, but that is a summer job. And it's because uh, the stop probably has moved on that side. Anyway, so now we know it all works. The thing we've got to do now is program all the keys because, let's see, Here is one. Nothing. Press the button on the radio transmitter for two seconds. That's it. Let's do it. Alright, let's see if that's worked. No. Ah, yes. We're in. Okay, so we've memorized one transmitter, but there's three more in the cars and another one spare in the in the house to do. So I'll memorize all that. Um, but just to show you now, press the top button and the gate's shut. That's brilliant. So I'll reassemble all that and put the covers on the boxes, put all the boxes back together and that's it really. Um, I'll do you a quick video when it's all done and operating uh, normally but I think I should say what the cost is and how hard it was to get the circuit board. So I contacted the company that was um, my dad had written down and they no longer sold that circuit board. But I found one in a supplier in France who had a spare one just hanging around and uh, it cost 189 euros plus 6 euros delivery but to be honest to get the gates back I think that's a good it's a good deal a new system is 600 euros plus and there's nothing wrong with it, it just needs a bit of updating in the summer so that's it um, right we'll come back to you in a second Right, it's all reassembled, got a new cover on that box. The only thing we haven't tested is my dad's, uh, shall we say, add-on systems. Uh, we'll go and have a look. My dad was pretty good at thinking outside the box. And we've got this light here on a pole. We've got a light there and a light there, triggered by, let me show you. By that sensor 
So when a car pulls up, it puts those lights on and puts this light on. But he wanted a way of uh, turning these lights on from inside the house. And we didn't have enough wires to do it. But he worked out that if you cut the power to the sensor and then reinitialize it, then it stays on. It does a cycle. So the switch inside goes to that relay box we saw earlier. When you press the button, um, you cut the power and then the lights come on. Which is brilliant. Genius. Right, so let's test this out, see if the gate's open and shut. Oh yeah, it's noisy on you. Very noisy. Super noisy. Go get your toy. Where's your toy? Go get your toy. There it is. Well, go and get it, get your toy. That's it. Come on then. Oh no. Well, don't whinge about it. Okay. So if I press this open close, I don't know if we can see. Can you see the gate there? We'll try and zoom in. Anyway, I'll press the button. Yep, and the gates are opening. And once it gets past a certain point and it's open, this light flushes, so we know. And that's it, really. Um, we'll check that they're both open and they shut from this. That's it. That was the switch I was talking to you about, about the lights. You press and hold that in. I don't know if you can see, maybe you could see the uh, light that's standing up. There we go. Resets the sensor and then it comes on. For the pre arranged amount of time as well, which is super cool. Um, yep, yeah, gates are open. Press that, close. So that gate is now shut in. And then the second. Oof. There you go. So, a bit of detective work and it's fixed. You know, I used to enjoy doing these projects because now I could go back in, tell my dad what it was. We'd have a chat about it, a bit of a laugh. It just doesn't feel the same anymore. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you can, subscribe and like. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.